Hello everybody and welcome back to this week's local history story. One of the best things about working in local history is that you do come across all sorts of strange and wonderful things uh, just in the course of a day's work. And this is a story that one of my colleagues came across a wee while ago and it's always stuck in my head as a great uh, sort of legend of Old Dundee. And it's maybe one of the spookier ones in this series. Uh, so if you're with really wee children, uh, be aware of that. But there's nothing too horrible goes on. Um, and this story takes place in 1815. So this is before the Tay Bridge was built. And if you were to go from Dundee over to Fife, uh, you would have to get one of the ferries. And there have been many boats which have sailed between Dundee and Newport over the years. But in 1815, uh, the man that was known as the best boatman on that route uh, was a man known as Cossack Jock. And he was a very tall, imposing man with a big, bushy beard. He ran a boat uh, named the Nelson, which he had named after his maritime hero. And Jock had saved the boat and its passengers in terrible conditions on many a time in his days on the sea. But one Sunday in late May in 1815, just when it seemed the weather should be improving for the summer, there was a dreadful storm came out of nowhere on the day. And Jock did his best but the Nelson went down along with all 22 of her passengers. And the folk who were looking out from the shore, wondering if they could get a rescue mission out, said they saw Jock hanging on till the very last minute, flailing around in the water, seeing if he could grab anyone or keep any bits of the boat together in order to rescue something from the wreck. But sadly, there was no saving Jock or any of his passengers. And his body was the last of them all to wash up. Um, and it came up ashore at the Craig Pier in Dundee, which was uh, not far from the harbour. And it was not far from Jock's own little house either. Uh, so he was taken in um, and laid out as the custom was at that time um, before the funeral. The body uh, would be laid out with candles uh, lit all around him and his friends could come in and say their goodbyes and pay their last respects. And Jock was a popular man, uh, especially around the sailing and the fishing community in Dundee, so he had a lot of uh, folk coming in to say goodbye, all the fishwives, uh, the harbour men were coming in and sharing their stories of Jock and singing songs and there was a good wake getting going. He made quite an imposing corpse being such a large man. But everyone was uh, getting into the swing of things um, and singing songs and telling stories and all of a sudden the talking was interrupted by a loud gasp from one of the mourners by Jock's bedside. And everyone looked over and in the flickering candlelight they saw there was definitely something moving underneath the sheets. It looked like Jock's hand was shifting from his side beneath the sheets and everyone screamed and lots of folk rushed for the door. But those who had not left watched and it looked like his hand was crawling its way up the side of the sheet and it was about to come out from the top when there was a horrible clattering sound and those who were brave enough looked over and they saw instead of Jock's hand a gigantic black crab had fallen from the bed and was making its way out of the trailing sheet and tapping its way across the floor. And the mourners that were still in the room, they looked at this huge black crab and someone shouted, it's the devil! 
And now people were happy to run and huddle around the corpse to give this demon crab a wide berth as it scuttled sideways for the door. And the shouts of Satan and it's evil had reached the streets outside. So there was a big crowd gathering around at a safe distance to see what was going to emerge from the cottage. Now this crab, all it knew was that it would rather be at home in the sea. So it was just tapping his way along to the harbour. And it looked like the crab was going to get a clear run back to safety until it happened to wander into the path of old Creole Katie. Now, Katie was an old wifey who wandered the shores and she would beach comb and gather a bit of this and a bit of that for her living. And she saw this crab and uh, she made a good swipe at its back legs and she caught the crab and dangled it up in front of the horrified audience. And everyone looked at her with their mouths gaping open. And Katie just said, well, what are you letting such a bra big parton go for? And everybody shouted, leave him, Katie. It's no canny. It's no crab. It's the devil himself. But Katie looked at the crab and she wasn't very phased. She said that he would get a good long summer in the pot that evening for herself and her husband Davy, who had not been keeping well lately. So that's exactly what she did. She took the crab home and she put him in the pot. And her neighbours said that as she cooked, they saw this big gust of black smoke reeking of pitch and brimstone come out of her chimney. And some people said that they saw old Clutie himself come flying out of her window with his hooves and his horns and his tail. But all Katie would say about the matter was that this was as good a bit of crab as she'd ever eaten in her life. And what's more, it had helped her husband get out of his illness. And that's not something she thought the devil was very likely to do for such a kind and Christian body as her Davy. So that is the story of Cossack Jock and the Demon Crab. And uh, there might have been one more good thing to come out of this unfortunate incident uh, because they say that this boat wreck uh, was also the inspiration um, for the founding of the Dundee Orphan Institution as a way of looking after uh, the poor children whose families had been lost in the wreck. And this went on uh, to be a very well sort of respected and well known institution throughout uh, Victorian Dundee. Um, but that is pretty much all I know of the story of Cossack Jock and the Demon Crab. Uh, so we will see you next week, and in the meantime, uh, look out for any suspicious sea creatures. <laughs>